Joey here. It has been a very long time since we've had to do one of these. Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zen. Hello. This is Shonen Archive. This is a series dedicated to watching all of the Shonen Jump anime that is available to us. Uh, either through official means or unofficial means, but either way we will try and get to them if it is possible. And we plan to do this until the eventual heat death of the universe. Or one of us gets taken down, whichever one, whichever happens first. It's the inevitability of the universe catches up with us. Exactly. The queen is gone and eventually one of us two will fall. But feel free to leave in the comments which one of us you think is going to go down first. I've been working out, so I'm making sure to stay healthy so that I'm the one that's left. <laughs> Showing up to Zed's funeral, super swole. <laughs> he lived the life he wanted to live. Damn it! I burned this my hero page in his honor and in his legacy. <laughs> and that's the show. And it has been over two weeks since we did it. If you're wondering where they were, Zen was just on vacation. <laughs> End of story. Uh -huh. Yeah, but he's back now, so we're ready to get right into it. With episodes of Gintama, episodes 72, 73, 74, and 75. Alright, Zen, let's get right into it. Thankfully, these episodes are very much uh, one-offs. Each, every single one of them are one-offs. Yeah, they're not, uh, there's not much to them. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean this in a nice way, because, like, I, yeah. thanks. Because <laughs> that yes. was a lot of of stuff um right after the stuff last stuff we did so i'm uh i'm cool with them not being super in your face yes and also this is the second anime i've ever seen now that has a learning how to drive episode <laughs> oh yeah i thought of that exact same thing while yeah. watching it <laughs> so let's start with episode 72 which i believe is a two-off um, first one is called a dog's paw smell fragrant. A dog's paws smell fra fragrant. I thought it was fragment for a second. I was like, okay. And then the other one is I don't remember the, the drive with a mite attitude. There you go. <laughs> Tell us about the first one, Zen. So the first one, uh, Sadaharu is uh, down in the dumps, and he's. Uh, not feeling well, and they realize that he's apparently in heat, so they want to find him a mate. So they go to the dog park, and he falls in love with that little, uh, the little wiener dog that had puppies like a long time ago in one of the earlier episodes. Yes, the, um, I believe the full name is "The Last of the Mohicans Living Off the Dead MacGuffin." Is the full <laughs> title of the dog. <laughs> um, and so. Uh, they they like fall in love and also uh, what's his name? Uh, Hisagawa. Hasagawa uh, is there with his like robot dog because he's trying to pick up women, so he got a robot dog. Um, yeah. To go to the dog park. I think they make fun of him too, saying he's very they lonely. <laughs> he's they a do. very they make lonely fun of him man. Immensely. Um. And so, the dog uh, of over the owner of the wiener dog because if you remember it is a bunch of yakuza gang members who yes. are uh, the owners of that dog um and they agree that they can they can date they have to like have that like he's talking to uh sadahari like he's a teenage boy that, <laughs> that like i'll allow you to go on some <laughs> dates and see what happens um they have a, a chase in those swan boats yeah. that you see on lakes. They have, like, a big chase scene in one of those. Um, eventually, they all kind of make peace, and then um, the Ibo dog, which is the name of the robot dog uh, that Hasegawa brought, is uh, having sex with the uh, Yakuza person's dog. I thought it was humping. I didn't think they would go full on showing. <laughs> well, there it ends with a like a rocket blast that I am fairly certain is meant to be. <laughs> so a, you're saying a, they made this dog robot, the robot dog anatomically correct? I'm just saying because I don't know why you'd have a rocket launch in both times it's humping. 
All right, fair enough. I also want to make a correction. The, the Last of the Mohicans Living of the Dead MacGuffin is the name of the reporter's dog. Which uh, the yes, one because the, the reporter is there and has a dog, and then Gintoki's trying to chat her up. Yeah, about I think, the dog. Yeah, which is right after he made fun of Hasegawa for using a dog to pick up women, and he immediately uses uh, Sadaharu. He asked her, "Excuse me, could you and I, I mean my dog and your dog, do it?" <laughs> going straight for it. Not no well, no. That's f- what you gotta do? You just gotta go in. Sometimes, Swing. yes, exactly. Dudes out there listening, sometimes you just need to be kind of forward in a polite way. (laughs) (laughs) In a respectful manner. So, I remember thinking this episode was pretty funny. Uh, A lot of it has to do with uh, just how silly the concept is and how they end up just kind of taking it as serious as possible. Because once... um, (laughs) Once Sadaharu kind of falls in love, and the dog is specifically one that it's had puppies before, Kagura immediately thinks the dog is not good enough for her, and that she's easy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and which pisses off the other guy. He's like, "What are you talking, my dog? My dog, not a, not easy. Excuse you. Extremely rude. A uh, too loose is what she says, which is a real fucked up thing to say to someone's dog." <laughs> Uh, and again, yeah, it was a very, like, sit back, relax, just have a nice good time with these characters. I think at this point it's been a very long time since we saw Hasegawa as well, so it was kind of nice to see him back No, as well. he was in, oh, uh, what has it been? I think, I relatively feel speaking. like he was in one pretty recently. Hmm. He's a lot more in these upcoming, no, he wasn't in any of the Fuyu arc. He was not in that at all, okay. so he wasn't in there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm misremembering one that comes later in this episode. Yes. Um, for one that came before this, that, yeah. that I'm thinking of. Mm-hmm. So, completely enjoyable for me. Nice old time. Might have been the best. Nah, maybe one of the better Sadaharu focused ones. Ah, uh, um, I would say that. But yeah. Haru episodes aren't particularly good. So usually the wor- one of the worst ones is actually that's why I'm always like eh, a little bit hesitant to remember. I, I like the one where he finds a note. Not to say that there's bad moments with Sadaharu, because I think I like Sadaharu, but usually when there's like the little 12 minute ones, they can be a little bit of a hit or miss thing. When the entire uh-huh. focus is specifically him, it can sometimes be a little bit hit or miss for uh, for me, is what uh, I'm saying here. So, perfectly good. Perfectly enjoyable. Good times, good jokes. <laughs> Anything else to say, Zen? No, that's about it. Just, you know, funny Sad. bits. Good, saw funny bit. Sometimes that's all you need. Now we'll go into part B, talking about all you need. <laughs> Dried with a might attitude. Yes, so Gintoki, uh, in one of the episodes um, last time, I believe the, the last episode on the last one we talked about, he, he hit that ninja guy with his bike, and so mm-hmm. he got his license uh, like suspended, and he has to go back to driving school. And then Katsura is also there in his Captain Katsura disguise <laughs> uh, to learn how to drive as well because he needs a driver's license because he can't rent DVDs without an ID. And he wants to keep up with the pop culture trends that his uh, insurrectionist <laughs> friends are like arguing about. Yes. Um, so they are trying to get their driver's licenses and Katsura is the one driving the car, and he see he has like a fantasy about like a an old man and a young lady who is like his daughter in law. Uh, the husband of the the woman is dead, and she's still staying with the father in law to like take care of him. And he's urging her to move on, and she's not because she feels like she owes him. And he keeps randomly hallucinating them in everything. Like, he pulls up on the, the train tracks, like the practice train tracks, <laughs> yes. and then he hallucinates the old man trying to kill himself on the train tracks so that it, it will free the daughter from the burden of caring for him. <laughs> um, and then it's eventually revealed he's, like, talking to street cones, and he's, like, using them as the characters in his weird hallucination. Yeah. Uh, and so Gintoki hits him with a car, and then it ends that portion of it. <laughs> and then he's back at the DVD rental store, and they're like, hey, we need an ID, and you can't have it without an ID, so he just hands them uh, his wanted poster. And he says, use this as my ID. 
<laughs> we just should have done from the beginning. <laughs> There's also a really good joke in this where um, the driving instructor is like, all right, you have to um, make sure that you inspect each portion of the car uh, before you start. And every time Katsura inspects like an area of the car, Gintoki just hits him with the car. <laughs> Yes, he just so totally does not want to be have him involved in this at all. <laughs> Constantly attacking him at every given turn. <laughs> I also think that when he ends up trying to talk to his uh, old friends about the J dramas, they've all moved on already, and he gets angry and leaves once again. Yeah, he he. Yeah, uh, they're all like, it's not the cool one anymore. No, completely invalidating everything that he was trying to do uh for this episode i didn't have much notes for this because it's just really it's another silly one <laughs> there's nothing i really yeah, did I like mean, it's just it's just funny joke it's funny times doing funny things it's yeah. about it that that joke about the the vision that he has goes on for so long <laughs> yeah it, it goes on for so long and the they also don't fully like tell you that that's what's happening at first, so no. it just eventually cuts to like this happening, like it just cuts to the woman and the old man like having an emotional moment together, and you're like, what? And then it's eventually revealed that it's Katsura hallucinating it. Like it's not set up that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not set up that way at all. Which was funny when they do the reveal when he's like freaking out. I also think it's really funny that he himself went to go get a driver's license. But the when he was when going to go uh, check out the thing from the um, the DVD rental, he went as just Katsura. If he were to get the license, he would have gotten the license as Captain Katsura. Therefore, it would not actually have worked. Would not out have for actually him. worked. Yeah. No, <laughs> it, it would have actually have been pointless. <laughs> Unless he always went up to, to the rental place in that gig and in, in that outfit. Captain Katsura disguise. Yes. So. A lot of this was Katsura, and I like Katsura, so it was a good time once again. Yeah, good I'm a joke. big fan of Katsura, so it's, it's hard to not enjoy yourself when Katsura's yeah. doing things. Yeah, and Gintoki's there just completely hate. Uh, th there's also a subset of this of how much he just does not like Katsura. Yes. <laughs> that also makes itself really, because he's really not doing anything to make him angry he's just kind of like minor inconvenience at best yeah it's mostly just like an annoyance but he's yeah. still like super irritated about it yeah just instantly just like mm, i don't <laughs> don't want to deal with you at all uh, so that was episode 72 a really good starting off point of just like hey this i think this kind of sets the tone for the remaining episodes except for funny enough i think 73 is the one episode that is like off from the, all the other episodes. Uh, uh, this... Yeah, 73 has got a bit yeah. of like an actual emotional core to it. I, <laughs> as I opposed think... to the others. Yeah, especially compared to the other. I think actually doesn't um, 72 end with them saying a, a real episode is coming next week? Yeah, I think so. Like an actual episode of the show yeah. is coming up. Yeah, <laughs> it's basically, hey, sorry, a real episode is coming next week. So even they admit, like, hey, what can you do, man? <laughs> Listen. Sometimes you gotta do shit, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, this, this episode that's coming up is also kind of just like a silly nothing episode, but it has it some is. nice little it, emotional yeah, it has moments some, in it that make up it for does. it. It does. It has some real, especially the ending. Of, let's actually get into it. Episode 73, as I was about to just casually talk to you about the episode <laughs> and my, my feelings for it. Think for a uh, minute now. Do Matsuki mushrooms really taste all that good? I've never had them. I, I don't think I've ever eaten a mushroom. So, uh, episode 73, they are once again getting hit up for rent, and they don't have the rent because they are poor. And so they are trying to figure out how to get money for rent, and they decide they're going to sell mushrooms. Um, so they go into the, mushroom, the forest to find mushrooms. They eventually find like a weird bear with a mushroom on the top of his head. And it's revealed by a wandering uh, hunter that there's like a mushroom infection that makes you crazy and like dangerous. Um, and then there's like a giant bear um, that that's attacking the area. He's trying to hunt the giant bear. It's revealed that the mushrooms are actually like a parasite, and they all um, 
end up getting infected because Kagura cooks the mushrooms into their food for some reason. Um, because she's Kagura. Because she's Kagura. That's yeah. She just does these things. Um, and then the hunter tries to help them and tell them to leave while he fights the big monster bear, but the gang stays behind to help him. Um, he reveals that he is the one who raised the bear from like when he was a little baby bear, and so he feels like it's his responsibility to put the bear down. Uh, he does so in a, in a very sad scene, and they kind of have like a little powwow with him when they return to the village about like where are you going to head to next, etc. And then they uh, they leave. Yeah, the they go off their own ways. Uh, there's not really a lot of jokes here, but I did like this one from Kagura, which is, how can you have an affair if you're scared of your wife? <laughs> which, <laughs> I thought it was very a very weird way to look at it. Of the only people who have affairs are people who are not, who are not scared of their wives at all. But I thought it was a good joke. In terms of the episode, I realized at some point that this bear's backstory is almost the same as Inosuke from Demon Slayer. <laughs> Which is funny, because this predates Demon Slayer by a long time. By a long time, I'm just saying. Maybe a, 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 the, a young writer of <laughs> Demon Slayer was watching this going like, you know what would be great? If this was a baby and they wore a boar head throughout the entirety of it. <laughs> Uh, but I, I ended up really liking it by the end. The specific shot of... Because he has a real, like, dedication of trying to find this bear and kind of, like... It's weird because he's trying to make amends, but also he can't really make amends for what he does. He abandoned this bear, and now this bear is completely off the handles. But then at the end, when it's finally time to actually put him down, the bear basically, like, accepts his fate. And doesn't, like, try to attack him. It does, like, a little... Which which really fucked me up. Because it does, like, a little head thing, which pets do. Like, you, do you know what I'm talking about when occasionally, like... The head tilt thing? Yes, yeah. the head tilt thing. It does it for him right before he pulls the shot. And I was like, that's just kind of fucked up. I... <laughs> that... that I, I'm... That seems like a really intense way to go for this show. <laughs> it's a really fucked up specific notion of like affection that usually between um a human and an animal that i don't know it ended up making the scene feel a lot more sad for me and stuff so i think it ended up doing pretty well was, uh i think it did effectiveness at his job which was to tell very quickly a story about a man and his bear how the man fucked up and has to take down his bear and then at the end the bear has like a tiny little redemption moment where I think it it's like doing... recognizes him a little bit, yeah. Yeah, and then it it gets taken down. So good stuff, good stuff. How you feel about it? It's good. It was another it was another like one of those episodes where it's still like Gintama dumb, but then at the end you're like, oh, this is actually kind of yeah. kind of sweet for a show this stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yes. For a show like, the mushroom still looks like the Mario mushroom, and it's like yeah. they all look like toad mushrooms on top of their heads. They do. Yeah. This this episode also does begin with um, them getting complaints from last week's episode. Yes. <laughs> Saying they were um, heavily complaining about last week's episode. I also think the, the opening bits with Catherine, when she's like ha- stalking them, basically are pretty funny too. Oh yeah, where she's trying to find them in the house while they're trying to escape out the... The window. That window, yeah, just trying to leave at any given moment. I thought that was funny. Yeah, it's a quality episode. Mm-hmm. Consistent uh, Gintama quality. Yes. And then there's also a weird end bit. I don't remember this, because, again, it's been a while since we've seen these. There's a weird end bit with the Ginpachi sensei to fill time talking about King Kong Hills. I think he's literally just like, I'm here to fill in time. King Kong Hills. And then it just ends. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> yeah, I, re- I, I I vaguely remember this, but now I'm like trying to remember this as like I'm, I'm a fucking pro tag with a video game from 2008 where I'm just like, what? What the fuck does this mean? What does this message just randomly mean? <laughs> I'm debating whether or not this is real. <laughs> so if you know what I'm talking about here, feel free to tell us. <laughs> but we'll move on to episode 74 for now. The manga writer becomes a pro after doing a stock of mana manuscripts. There you go. 
<sighs> episode 74. Go ahead, son. All right. Episode 74. Uh, they're sitting around in the whatever the name of the shop that's not their shop is, the one underneath, mm-hmm. the granny bar. Um, Orochimaru bar. Yeah, and Catherine shows up, and she's almost got a unibrow, and they all make fun of her, and they're like, go shave your fucking unibrow, you freak. And so she's like, all right. <laughs> freak middle-aged. <laughs> yeah, Everything you can so imagine. she goes, but then she comes back and starts ask, acting like a zombie. Uh, she attacks Otose, and it turns out that uh, the unibrow is like a zombie plague, because as they're running away, like the town's all fucked up in grayscale, and like there's fog everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh and everyone who has a unibrow is like wandering around like a zombie. And if you get attacked by one, you get one. Um, they find Katsura, who's like all fucked up and bleeding everywhere. And he's like, oh, yeah, shit got bad. And then he like has a flashback that explains what happened to him. And he just fell down the stairs. <laughs> um, yeah, taking out the trash. Yeah, he was taking out the trash and he fell down the stairs. Uh, they put the area under martial law and reveal that it's like a special virus that's designed to make you act like a useless old man. Mm-hmm. Um, they escape to a pachinko parlor. Um, I think that's, that, yeah, they go to the pachinko parlor because Hasegawa pulls them in to hide there. Uh, and it's Hasegawa, Gintoki, Kagura, Shimpachi, Katsura, and I think also um, Sachan. I forget yeah, she, when she shows up. but She she's shows up well. when they're in the... I think it's after Hasegawa explains how he got there, which is like the most bizarre fucking backstory. <laughs> Where um, it's like a guy in a top hat and he has no pants on. Well, and he's right, because he's, he's hurt too. And they're like, oh my god, did they get you? And he's like, no. And then his... Yeah, he gets like shot by a guy in a top hat. <laughs> Who's the owner of the pachinko parlor, I think is what he yes. says. <laughs> yes. Um... But they think they're safe in there because it's like reinforced glass. But then um, it's revealed that Otai was zombified. And so she starts smashing through the glass because she's like super strong. Uh, so they're all fleeing as uh, Otai keeps breaking through all of their barricades and stuff. Eventually they get up to the roof and it's revealed that the old man, um, Matsudaira, has like a rocket launcher with a vaccine. Mm-hmm. Um but he gets turned into a zombie from in the air because he breathes in the virus uh, and the helicopter crashes and he drops the, um, the vaccine and everyone's getting mobbed by the unibrow zombies, except for Gintoki who catches the vaccine and fires it into the air and saves everyone. And Shinpachi is giving this dramatic speech about like, as we were all being torn down, he stood tall. And then like, he gets like this big dramatic speech that just reveals the only reason Gitoki was able to do it is because he's basically already a useless old man. <laughs> yes. And then re- this shot is also fucking fantastic. The way they, 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 they it's so, it, mm, this is such a good bit because they do the dramatic thing while also making <laughs> this the most silliest thing in the world. It's like a back shot of him with the rocket launcher. And then they do a dramatic shot of him firing it. And then they do a close-up shot of him with the gun. And then it says underneath it, he was already a useless old man. Yeah, they're like, uh, he's the perfect one to fight against the the disease because he's already a useless old man. So Mm. it can't do anything to him. No, can't be done at all. Nothing can be done for him. And it ends with a big ol', uh... Uh, Kuchikama Banzai to the useless old man because if you did not know this this entire episode is dedicated to Kochikama Ko- Kochikama which is the eyebrow guy from Shonen Jump if you don't if over here on in the in the west side of stuff we don't know him much but he's literally like uh the 35 years serialized in Shonen Jump as I think of how much he's how long this character has lasted in Shonen Jump and this was I think around the time that they were ending no, the thir- it had to be 30 years. I think he was... This is when it was actually ending, so 30 years. It's a little bit... They actually kind of make fun of this a little bit, because they say it's actually the 31 year. And then they say, do you understand the time lag between serializing a manga in Jump and the resulting anime? <laughs> um, which I thought was funny. They also get the voice actor from Kochikama as well. He voices... When they turn into zombies, he voices every single one of the characters. That's so funny. I did not know that. That's an amazing bit. Yeah. And they also, the, the, La Salle, that is the name of the voice actor. 
the thing that they keep saying throughout it all. That's so good. Yes. Um, so this episode, obviously, even though it is completely dedicated to a character that me and you don't know outside of two specific Shonen Jump fighting games, because <laughs> it's the only way I was ever really brought to him, is that he's in the PS3, I think, Arena Fighter, and he's in the DS game. Um, Jump. That's funny as fuck. Yeah. Um, I ended up really liking this episode because it really did kind of feel like it was a specific, like, love letter to the person who had made the series. Like, there's so many references to it that it can almost feel like, oh, if you don't understand them all, that it doesn't going to work. But it also kind of works because it's also a parody of a zombie movie. <laughs> so it works on that front for yeah. me, too. Just, like, on a base level as the zombie parody? Yes. Oh, my God. When they showed Elizabeth and Katra's like, oh, Elizabeth. Oh, it's all good. And then everyone's like... There's no way to tell if Elizabeth has been caught, right? <laughs> and then, and then I think, it's revealed that her uh, her sign has, yeah. um, <laughs> has oh, the unibrow on it. Unibrow. And that's how Katsura <laughs> gets taken down. <laughs> Which is really good. Um, uh, I also like the bit where they're in the elevator. Uh, and they're like, is everybody here? And they Gintoki counts. And he's like, yeah, six, we're all here. And Shinpachi's like, there's only five of us. And he's like, no. And he goes to buy it through them one by one. And he's like, Sachan, one. Me, two. You, three. Kagura, four. Uh, Katsura, five. Hasegawa, six. And he points at only Hasegawa's sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, that, this is where the soul of Hasegawa lives. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, he's really just the sunglasses anyway. <laughs> Which is really good. Um... Fuck, there's another good bit when they're on the roof and they think they're going to be saved. And I think he's basically saying, don't worry, we have enough food for you to last for another week. And then he's like, get, get, get us off of the fucking thing. <laughs> he's like doing the worst like governmental job of saying like, hey, yeah, we'll provide support. You got some food for another week. He's like, could you just get us off here? No. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> don't think I'm going to be doing that. But don't worry, we have the vaccine. Um <laughs> So I thought this episode was great. I, I I absolutely loved it. It's a real shame that I think we'll never be actually able to watch this series in for Shonen Archive. Not because it, uh, we don't like plan on it or anything, but literally because it's over thirty like, years of anime. It, that, yeah, yeah, we can't find it. Um, and same thing goes for the manga. I've been I've been trying for years to try and see if anyone has translated the over one thousand chapters of this fucking series, and I can never find more than twenty. It is actually impossible to find it if you're specifically an English-speaking person. So, I kind of, I enjoyed this episode. I thought it was really good, and it felt like a nice send-off. It felt like a very nice, like, yeah, good job, man. As someone who, as, who is, I guess, from one comedy series to the other, at least at a recognition of, like, I, my main character is also a useless old man, so I <laughs> game re recognize game. Oh, that's so good. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about it? I really liked it. Um, I love the, the zombie parodies. I thought they were all really funny. Um, the bit about how they just left Hasegawa behind was really funny. <laughs> um, all of it was funny, basically. I liked all of it. It's hard to, for me to dislike a zombie parody, when they're, especially when they're well done. Yes, we um, both uh, absolutely love zombie movies. Yeah. And, yeah, and I thought it was really funny, too, when they were... Um, when when Ote showed up as a zombie and they're like, oh god, it's the strongest <laughs> zombie of all time. That was funny. He was like, I will be fine. And then absolutely the worst person you could imagine becoming yeah. a zombie is a zombie. So that so was good. good. Also, the next episode preview had the voice actor for Kochikame on there as well. He was doing the next episode preview. And I think Gitoki's like, you're not going to be in the next episode. And he's like, oh, <laughs> what? I'm not? So I thought that was also very nice continuing on and it would lead into an episode that is oh my god this episode that we're about to talk about is something else i really should have one of those episodes that's so clearly like a nothing episode like it's it's a complete technically a waste of time but these are some of my favorite gintama episodes this might so uh while zen was away i've started um compiling a list for an end of the year award show specifically one of the categories is uh best episode and i think the first one i put down was this one because i literally created the category after watching this 
it's so it's like you said it's such nothing but there's so many good bits in it of what they don't have to care about any of it let's go into it right now episode 75 i've been waiting over two weeks to talk about this episode with zen <laughs> episode 75 don't complain about your job at home do it somewhere else yes um so this is uh, another recap episode. Um, they kind of celebrate that they have managed to no, not wait. Get canceled. Go, go back. Wait. I'm sorry. I didn't say the right title. Did you not say the full name? The full no. title. The full title of this episode is "Someone said don't complain about your job at home. Do it somewhere else." So let me complain. It's already been a year since this anime, which began with the Land of the Samurai. The days when our country was called at are long past. A lot of things have happened since then, so I thought it might be a good time to look back. But then someone said, a recap episode, isn't that slacking? Look, it's hard work putting together an anime, so stop complaining. That is the full title of this episode. <laughs> Forgive me, Zen, I had to get it, I had to get it out. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's another recap episode, and they're like... They're reflecting on the past, like it's like they, it's like a they're doing commentary on like a DVD reel, um, yeah. and as they do it, they're like, first they start really slow, and Shinpachi's like, we're gonna take forever if we keep going this slow because they do like all of their introductions and they do like a full explanation, and so like, all right, fuck it, we'll just play a song, uh, and so they play a song over the entire first year of the show. And then they get into, uh, or, well, first they cut to a commercial break, and they're like, stay tuned, we have a huge news after the break. And then it plays a trailer for the Benny Zakura movie, uh, which is real. But then afterwards, Shinpachi gets mad, and he's like, don't show them fucking fake trailers for movies that aren't going to happen. Uh, yes. So Tokyo's is like, it's okay, they're, they're going to make it, probably. Maybe <laughs> if we make the fake trailer, they'll just go ahead and make the movie. So this is where we finally learn that movie. This is where it started. It started as a joke. <laughs> this is a reoccurring bit in Gintama where they keep making the fact that they're going to make a movie based off of the Benazakura arc. Oh, it's so good. Um, and then they're like discussing how the movie could be made. And so they start, they go on from that and they start showing like a recap from the Benazakura arc. But then when they get to Shinsuke, it's Prince Hada who's dubbing <laughs> over his voice. Yes. <laughs> and it's maybe the funniest bit that the show's ever done. Um, <laughs> because they, he dubs over the, the line where he meets Kagura on the boat. Uh, and Shinpachi gets all mad. And he's like, Shinsuke fans are going to kill you because he's like the hot, cool guy. And you're making him sound like an idiot. Um but then Gintoki and Kagura find it really funny, so they keep making him do it. So it goes through like all of Shinsuke's scenes, all of them being dubbed by Prince Hata. So good. This fucking bit of like it's such a dumb bit because it's not like he's delivering them funny. It's just that Prince Hata oh, sounds he's like reading Prince... It in Prince Hata's voice. Yeah. No. So he's like, Hold on, I told you I will destroy this rotten world. And then it's great, too, because that's the only voice that's changed while he's doing this. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's the scene where he's, like, confronting Katsura. <laughs> and it's playing Katsura's regular dramatic lines. And then it cuts back to him being like, Oh, yeah, we started out in the same place, <laughs> but our paths have always been different. Oh. Which is extra funny because the original voice actor for that guy... For anyone who doesn't know voice actor names, is uh, Dio's voice actor from JoJo. <laughs> yes, it is. So it's like that deep, you know, like it is resounding cannot... voice, and it's the like the polar opposite voice. It's so fucking it's funny. It's so good. You could not literally on the Venn diagram of different voices. One side is Dio's big masculine like oh, oh, voice, and on the other is. This Fucking Prince Hada voice, which sounds Prince like Hada. Japanese Marlon Brando. <laughs> so fucking good. And the way that the characters are just like laughing and making one of it as they go on. And Jifachi's like, please don't. We have to stop. They're going to be so mad at us. It's so good. It's 
so good. And they eventually, I think, start, like, they're all dubbing over different lines from different people. Yeah. It's, oh, so good. I actually don't remember how this episode ends, because <laughs> my notes end with the fucking Suchi thing. Yeah, well, because, like, after that, they're just, like, they don't really do anything after that. And they're just like, here's to more Gintama. Soon. Yes, don't It'll be mess good up. again. I promise. I think they end it again with them saying, "I we promise we're gonna make it good now." Yeah, and and then it ends with a trailer for the next arc. Yes, which yeah. is the what we'll talk about next week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, we will. So to go over some things, as I have some other notes here, the beginning of this starts with a new song over the old OP. And it's like the the Chome Chome song. It's like the full version of Your Mother is a Chome Chome from um, The Idol. And I think they mentioned, like, uh, we've ran out of money and we can't use anything. We I think that's the reason that they're saying they're doing a clip show is that we've ran out of money. And the funny thing is, I noticed this, they're using old clips to make this specific joke. They're not using any new footage at all because none of the voice lips match. So they are <laughs> they are literally the re, it's so this is such an extra level of dumb for the show where they're like no, we're going to take old footage and then we're going to try our best to make it look just shitty enough so people kind of notice because at one point when Prince Hada gets hit he gets hit because Prince Hada shows up. Because believe it or not, Prince Hada, the, that joke is not the only thing. He shows up here because they play the OP like three times. And during well, the they sec- play it twice. Yeah. They play the the old OP through the, the Osu-chan song. And then Kagura and Gintoki get pissed off about it. Because mm-hmm. um, like that's not the proper opening. Like We paid this band to make this song. And so Shinpachi's like, fine, we'll play. And then he names the song. Um. And they start playing the current opening. Yeah. And then halfway through, they switch it to the Prince Hada one, where he's like Tarzan. <laughs> yeah, so th- it starts being like this montage of just Prince Hada clips. <laughs> they yeah, have the open- <laughs> like halfway through. And so it's really fucking funny. And then at the end, he's <laughs> like, uh, Prince Hada's like, what? what's going on? And they're like saying, well, that, doesn't, that wasn't the right OP. And then Prince Hada's like, oh yeah, I thought you could, you know, I could be a more popular character this way. People really want towards Prince Hada. And they kick him out of the of uh, <laughs> their office. But when they punch him, you can see very clearly he put, gets punched through a car. <laughs> so they're reusing the animation <laughs> of him. That's so fucking funny. Oh, it's so good. And then that also sets up again when he comes back later for Takatsuji. This episode is like a masterclass of understanding of how to be fucking funny with just not much effort. (laughs) Because they have, like, the idea of we can't have any money. Because they've done this before. But they have not gone the extra step of literally reusing old animation clips. Like, this is a clip show in every sense of it. Because they also reuse the super dramatic shot of all three of the characters from... I don't remember what episode. But there's it's, like, like from a very specific episode that was only made for that episode. And they reuse it here yeah, to say, like... Yeah, super, like, shaded dramatic shot. Yes. And they reuse it here, and it's really funny. And even when they're doing their whole uh, movie thing for the Men and Zakura arc, it's clearly just an excuse to reuse old footage with the idea yeah. of there being there's a movie. There's also a really good, like, because uh, Prince Hada keeps saying love and peace. He does it, like, yeah. three times. And it's love the and same peace. role of animation every time. <laughs> every single time. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. <laughs> this might actually legitimately be one of the funniest things from a, a joke anime that I've ever seen. There's, like, it's borderline, like, peak Adult Swim, like, non-humor <laughs> with the, yeah, the it's, what they're... it's one of those things that's, like, it's not a joke, but it's absurd enough to be funny. Yes, exactly. It 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 almost border, especially at the beginning part when they're talking over it. That reminds me a little bit of like mystery science theater. But the style of joke here is just like so good with everything they're doing with the specific things. It's it's something that you can only truly enjoy. It's only it's only a joke that you can do when you're just fully ready to make fun of whatever you've been making. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think it, it works though. It's so fucking good. Yeah. I absolutely love this episode. And it's so weird to describe it because when you describe it, it's like it's just literally reused clips. 
but reused in a really funny way. Almost yeah, like a... It's, like, it's not... You, because the connotation is like, oh, it's reused clips. And everyone's like, eh, it's, that's lazy. But, like, that's the joke. <laughs> that it's yeah. just, like, fucking reused fucking clips. Yeah. and, oh, and it's to, so fucking funny. Yeah. And to be fair to their specific music videos, they've at least, like, um made it so that when they show off the next like style of like clips like when they do the second ed to specific clips they fit with the actual like arc that they're going with and the same thing kind of can be said with the other stuff so like they made sure to save the second ed for the uh all the ben Zakura stuff basically because it fits the most well with it so there is a level of thought and detailed into this very stupid joke that i appreciate and that is w- should be commended for what they've done <laughs> Yes, absolutely. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like so many people, like oh, maybe ah, I don't want to like ma- start making fun of other things, but I'll just say like specifically, I think this worked out fa- fucking fantastic, and it was great, and it really shows how much the show has kind of improved over time. Because looking back at those old episodes, I'm like, yeah, it it is kind of crazy how what people say about Gintama is right. Is like once you actually get into some of the later stuff. It just makes the older stuff look bad in comparison. Even yeah, though it does. It really does. It really does. It. I think it's insane. Where I'm like, I don't understand where people are coming from. But it's not until you start getting into it more where you're, they start doing stuff like this where you're like, yeah, it's on, it's on another level. I'll give them that. Mm-hmm. 100%. Do you have anything specifically to say about this? Uh, no, not specifically. It's just it's quality humor. It's really well done jokes. Like they're all funny. Like the in- pretty much every joke they make is really good. The the yeah. Prince Hada stuff especially. Um, I don't know if it was extra funny to me because it has that extra layer of like Dio and obviously I fucking love yeah. JoJo. But uh, it was killing me <laughs> when they were doing the bit I, where because uh, also obviously we both really love the Benny's Sakura arc. Um, yeah. The bit where uh, he's confronting. Katsura on the ship. Yeah. But it's Prince Hada's voice is so fucking funny. Like so good. For <laughs> this stupid joke for the, they go they basically go back in time to make fun of one of the best arcs they've had so far. Uh, it's god damn it. It's just like perfect. So good. Yeah, it is it is a masterclass for what they've done here. It's it's fucking fantastic. <laughs> if there was more it, again, and I think this is what we're going into. I'm glad that this is the episode that we're stopping for right before another big serious arc cuz it really is kind of feels like a a balancing act of like, okay, we've got all the super silly <laughs> funny goofy shit. Now it's time to go into something a little bit more serious and we'll see how that goes and we'll see if we can enjoy that in the same break, but yeah fucking fucking great there's no amount of times i can say fucking and great in the same sentence to describe this episode and how much i enjoyed it <laughs> it was just great it was, oh, yeah it's just it's it's exactly the kind of humor that like you want yeah from the show it's, it works perfect. so perfect for me i'm two steps away from just saying that this is a peak fiction because <laughs> <laughs> this ended up making me like prince hada which is a character that's slowly been growing on me but when he fucking showed up here and was like love and peace people need more me right when yeah, no one he was literally like uh, people like me the most i'm probably the most popular character <laughs> let's go like more prince hada am i right just the idea of them going like hey we know no one's asking for more prince hada here's more prince hada. <laughs> let's really yeah, we, know, we know nobody wants this but here you go <laughs> And by the end of it, I was really liking it and, like, <laughs> enjoying it all, but man. Fucking great. Can't wait to talk more Gintama for next week, but I think that is where going to be good for for today's episode, because it's just literally going to devolve into me just nonstop loving this. I re- <laughs> it's really good. That's all I got to say. Yeah, it's spectacular. Gintama. Spectacular. <laughs> so that's the end of Shonen Archive. Zen, do you want to put any money on whether or not I can remember how to end the show? Uh, I believe in you. Damn it, I erased the ending bit. (laughs) (laughs) Shit, I should have bet. You should never have bet on me. But anyway, thank you very much, everyone, for watching Shonen Archive. 
we would not be able to do the show without the support and we thank you very much for waiting for us to get back into it i was very surprised when someone was actually like commented on the one of my Fago videos and was like hey you know is shonen archive still going and i'm like yeah of course <laughs> let me just make it very clear for everyone yes <laughs> probably was a little bit worried when he saw how well Fago was doing on the channel <laughs> and it was like breaking in thousands of views <laughs> so i was like eh, please continue doing shonen archive don't worry as long as me and zen have <laughs> life left inside of us we will continue on shonen archive ah <sighs> But if you want some more Zen, now that he's off of vacation, he's going to be back doing his channel. You can go to Zenrot's channel. I finally remembered to link Zen's channel at the end, <laughs> end bits of it, so you can finally click on him and go check out, um, I was about to say Shonen and Chill, right? That's that's the name that of your it. show. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I was about to say, nah, that's not right. He named it something else. <laughs> but no, it's Shonen and Chill, which it he does with, chill, yeah. with, with the ocean, man. If you want more videos from me doing stuff not related to Shonen Archive, then you can check out my channel. There's other stuff. I play Fago, and I occasionally remember to play other games that I play, I swear. <laughs> And you can also see uh, the other series we have for Shonen Archive, which is Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which we will be getting back to very soon, because it, we actually hit the good part of GX, so we want to continue talking about yes. that. Yes. We're in, we, we're in peak territory for GX now. Yes. We're really ramping up, really getting to the good <laughs> stuff. If you want to hear all about the Sigma male Misawa, then get ready for the next episode <laughs> of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. But thanks a lot, everyone. That's the end of Shonen Archive. We will see you guys in the next video. Till next time, say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Boom. I remembered the ending good enough. Boom. Eat yeah, that. that counts. That yeah, counts. that counts. <laughs> good enough. <laughs>